All right, y'all, let's get started. Um, let me first introduce myself. Uh, my name is Abe Batchon, guys. I'm the CEO of BeatStars.com. Um, if you're not familiar with BeatStars, we are an online music marketplace and licensing platform for music producers and recording artists to collaborate, work together, and be able to release um, commercial products outside of the platform to your favorite distributors or to your favorite social media apps like YouTube. And we basically create um, a network of both the songwriter and recording artist and the music producer. So probably heard a bunch of our beats on the radio from some of these guys. Um, a lot of beats have been um, licensed on our platform. Um, one that really, I think, well, I'll let these guys kind of tell their stories, but there's so many different uh, um, scenarios where beats that were discovered from our platform ended up making major, major album releases, um, you know, picked as singles by major artists, and it's just cool to see what the online disruption of digital media has done for the collaboration process and how artists and producers are now meeting each other and working together and collaborating with each other and essentially turning these guys into entrepreneurs, setting up their own um, businesses, uh, licensing their products, whether it's beats or kits or services, um, and it's democratized the way that the guy, these guys um, interact within the community and within the industry and now have leveraged themselves as music producers in a traditional way where they were always kind of left out of the conversation and now they're, they're the driving force as entrepreneurs um, selling beats online. So that's a little bit about the company um, and I'll let these guys introduce themselves and talk a little bit about uh, what they've done and uh, then we'll go into some questions. Kato. What's up, y'all? Everyone doing good? How many uh, producers? Okay. Makes sense that you guys would be here. Um, I go by Kato, Kato on the track. I'm a producer, entrepreneur. Um, I've been making music for over 10 years now. A lot of people that probably are familiar with my music uh, know me through working with artists like Jaron Benton, B.O.B., Hobson, Dizzy Wright, uh, Tory Lanez, Jonah Lucas, Token, Ritz, uh, who else, Abe? A lot of people. I'm from Atlanta, um, and I used to be signed to a successful independent label based out of L.A. called Funk Volume, and unfortunately, they kind of dissolved <laughs> overnight. Um, we can get into that whole story later, but... Uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here, happy to just be transparent with y'all and share as much information with you guys as possible, and I'm glad you guys came. Peace, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, my name is DJ Payne One. I've been fortunate to work with, with a lot of great artists. Um, I think my first major placement was Young Jeezy off the recession, so I was a college student transitioning from youth and adolescence to the real world and thanks to making music and thanks to Young Jeezy going platinum, I didn't have to make the transition. So I've, I've remained as a, as a kid for the last 10 years just making music um, and always utilize the internet. Uh, but I was kind of in that transitionary period of, of the music industry where the traditional structure was still dominant and now everything has been kind of inverted and reincorporated back into the traditional structures. And so now with the new wave of entrepreneurial uh, producer uh, independence, B-Stars has really kind of been my vehicle for um, uh, immersing myself in, in, that, in that new way of doing business. And it's, it's really dope, it's, it just, affords a lot of independence, it affords a lot of control, and there's literally no, other than the one that, that we create artificially through conversations, there's really no line between the internet and the industry as, as there was maybe five years ago. Hi everybody, um, I'm Cash Money AP, I'm 22 years old from France, 
And I had the chance to work with a lot of artists such as uh, Designer, Young Thug, Migos, um, to name a few. And I've been using Beastars for like a year and a half now. And I can really tell you that it's like the best platform for upcoming producers, even like for industry producers that want to get back to the online thing. And yeah, hope everybody has a, a good day so far. Cool, thanks guys. So I'm gonna jump right into, so you guys have, you two have played um, the role of like working within the industry and licensing beats. I feel like Cash Money is young enough to where when he first started um, showcasing his music, he was directly putting that stuff on the internet. It's probably the first time people have heard your music. So you didn't really like operate in um, the traditional world of trying to get placements early on. So like I started the company when he was 12 years old. So it just shows you that by the time he was 22, he was already going to internet first. But these guys come from a place where, you know, um, they wanted, they had aspirations of working with a lot of these big artists that you guys have worked with. So you've been trained in that way of, of, of that concept for so long. When did you guys decide to say, um, yeah, my content is more than just, you know, collaborating with, you know, inside of traditional industry, now I'm going to kind of dive in and to become an online entrepreneur. What, what was that moment for both of you guys? And, uh, and then Cash, you can answer that too. Go ahead, Kate. I'm a kiddo. Man, for me, when I was signed to Funk Volume, I think that really opened my eyes to how the internet can be used to reach your audience. And so obviously them, as a successful independent label, their fans were on the internet. So they used all the social media platforms, they used text and email alerts um, to stay in touch with their fans. And so just being around that and absorbing all the things that I learned from being on that label, once the label dissolved, I was able to take that, take those same concepts and apply them to my own career and how I reach my audience. So, um, you know, really after that funk volume situation, that's when things started to translate into how can I apply this to my own career. Right, because they were in really an internet focused record label in, yeah. a, in, a, in a day where that wasn't really the norm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I came up, you know, when I was coming, anyone in here had, had a MySpace page? <laughs> you know, I came up kind of in the MySpace era when that was like the only social media out and nothing else was really, nothing else really mattered. Um, I kind of call it the Soldier Boy era because I remember Soldier Boy kind of came up on yeah. MySpace and he was really the first kind of internet rapper that blew up off of that. And now, of course, it's like every new rapper is coming up off the internet. I mean, if you don't have a buzz on the internet, then you really don't have anything. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I still came up in a very kind of, I'm sort of like the midway between how things were done traditionally and how the new generation is doing things. So I just feel grateful to be able to learn about both and figure out a way to, you know, straddle both worlds. Okay. I had always been using the internet even before I, I had my um, kind of industry success story. But with me, is I was, I was teaching media to high schoolers. And so I would upload my lessons or you know, kind of like truncated versions of them to, to YouTube. And because one of the skill sets I was teaching kids was audio production, suddenly no one else was putting out that kind of content on YouTube at the time. There were very few people. Now everybody's doing it. But prior to that, I was one of the few. So I wasn't even thinking in terms of amassing a following on YouTube. And then suddenly I'm getting hundreds of thousands of views. Then millions of views and then the cheesy situation happens and now I'm making vlogs about my experiences both good and, and, and negative um, kind of navigating the industry world because I wasn't that was brand new that happened in 2008 um, and as I said I was just I had finished uh, my bachelor's I was I was starting uh, grad school so it was just kind of something that I did by accident um, and then when I started publicizing the work that I was doing in the industry, 
I think nowadays it still matters, but not as much. If you have quality content, you know, people will, people will find you. Uh, but I think then it was more advantageous to kind of flaunt your resume a little. And so as a result of that, people started contacting me for beats, but I didn't have an automated system. And that's the thing that killed me for, for the longest time. Like, I don't want to deal with these people hitting me in the inbox, saying stupid stuff all day, not trying to buy beats, just kind of leading me on all the time. And it was frustrating, you know, because maybe 10% of the people that contact you actually follow through on a sale. Um, so when, I, when it got to the point where I needed to automate it just to stay sane and to not spin my wheels all the time and waste time, then fortunately, uh, Mike Trampy, who's been, he's kind of connected me with everybody because I met him way back doing, he, was a, he uh, was a PR guy for Hip Hop DX and like the early Kendrick Lamar era of TDE. And he connected me with so many people and eventually he connected me with, with Abe with BeatStars and he encouraged me to get involved and I dragged my feet for so long. And then it was like the era of the superstar producers like Cash Money AP, like um, the crates and all these guys that I ended up meeting by using BeatStars and really understanding how deep the model went. Because I think a lot of people have a misconception about selling beats on the internet that it's just a matter of uploading a beat to the internet, typing Little Skies type beat or whatever, and next thing you know you wake up rich. I wish, um, but after having conversations with these dudes, it was like, wow, all of you really know how to navigate these different advertising platforms, how to optimize your videos and keywords. It goes so deep. I didn't know what a pixel code was until I started talking to the people um, that, that were entrenched in, in, in um, online sales. So for me, it was really, it was like the, the growth period was over the last year. Um, so I really haven't even been doing it for that long, but it's completely changed my business model and brought me a substantial new uh, stream of income such that it's starting to replace other more tedious work that I was doing to make money prior to, to, to me really um, getting my, my, uh, my, my marketing plan and, and my consistency where it needs to be uh, by using BeatStars. So Cash, what, what, why did you, I mean, or Tell me, what was your path? Because if you're making beats, you're a young, young guy, you're you know, cranking out beats in your bedroom and you're seeing all these other guys on the internet jumping on YouTube, jumping on BeatStars, on SoundCloud, uploading their beats. What, what, what was the inspiration for you to say, you know what, I'm ready, I'm gonna throw my stuff on YouTube? See, um, I just wanted to be heard. That's the, that's the only thing. When I started making music, I was 15. And I'm come, I come from a small island in the Caribbean. I don't know if you heard about it, called Guadeloupe. Yeah, that's where I'm from. And you know, the music scene out here is like small, really small. So the only way that I could have my music uh, to get hear, heard was like to just like drop music online. So that's what I did. And I kept like being consistent, dropping, dropping, dropping. Like even like not have any uh, social life, like just like dropping, dropping, dropping music. I always had music in my mind, like, how you all have to do this today. I have to drop a beat today, do this tomorrow. So that's how I like, came up. But I never had any thought about like, going industry first. My first thing was like, to go online and like, try to make a living of what I want to do. I mean, that's, that's so amazing, man. Like, to, to be from this small, this small island where there's no music industry and you're, you don't see like, successful artists, you don't see people you know, making a ton of music, and your first thought is like, this needs to go online. That just changes how, I mean, this guy can be anywhere in the world, these guys can be anywhere in the world crafting their music, and they're running um, a successful business. It's really, it's powerful. So, um, okay, let's get to, okay, now that, okay, we, we understand that, okay, you guys sell beats online now, you're making a living doing this, um, you're your own boss, What's the best part of being a successful entrepreneur? What's the, what, what feeling is the best part of this whole journey? Cato. I think for me, number one, it's the freedom to do what I love to do. I mean, you can't really ask for much more than that. You know, we're, we're put on this earth. Most people, most people go through their lives working, you know, jobs that they probably hate. And 
I've just been fortunate enough to be able to do what I love to do for a living. And just that alone makes everything worth it for me, you know? Um, and I'm sure for a lot of you guys, and that's why you guys are here, to learn how to do it for yourselves and how to create a successful living doing what you love to do. So that's all that really matters to me is as long as I'm happy doing what I love to do, you know, I can't really ask for much more. Okay. For me, it's just it's kind of this ownership um, because every second of every minute of every hour that I put in to working towards growing my brand goes directly into growing my brand. It doesn't go into growing somebody else's brand. It doesn't go into um, benefiting somebody else, building them up so that they can make money off of me. And then, you know, if I'm, oh my gosh, that's me. If I'm gone, I just get replaced. But if my brand is strong, that's mine forever. And all of my failures and all of my successes are mine, 100%. I own those. That's who I have to answer to at the end of the day. Um, obviously, there's still a lot of collaboration involved. There, there are partnerships involved. But no, one's, no one else is going to build your brand up the way uh, you are. And the fact that now there are the tools that have completely democratized the, the economic landscape of selling beats online, it's really it's all in our hands. Cash? Um, I would go with both of them, like, the the main, like, uh, I don't know what to say, but the fact that you can be, like, free to do whatever you want, like, you don't have nobody on your back telling you what to do, like, today, like, tomorrow, and to be, like, all your stuff, like, online is yours, like, you don't like, need to, like, have somebody, like, taking uh, giving credit to somebody else because you're making your own work, so that's, I'm going with them, like, I don't have, I'm, like, thinking about the words right now, you know, because it's hard with the language. So yeah, I'm going with them. Cool, so I mean, at the end of the day, you have to make amazing music to sell. Like, it's not gonna sell itself. Um, no matter how much traffic beat stars can drive or how many new people we can showcase your music to, um, you still have to have amazing music. Tell me a little bit about kind of your guys' creation process. Um, I've witnessed all three of you guys in different capacities making music and you guys all make music differently but all successful at the same time which is so what's so beautiful about making music cash i'll start with you man tell, tell us a little bit about what inspires you to make music how do you create it and what drives you every single day to continue i mean i saw, I saw this guy make 20 beats in like four hours just the other day and so what where does that drive come from mm, i just want to be rich <laughs> <laughs> and I love music, so it's like I do what I love, so nothing else comes for me, so yeah. And I just want to be rich, so yeah, that's it. That's why they call him Cash Money. That's true. All right, we'll wait for Payne to finish taking a selfie, but. That's a good <laughs> That's a D Club <laughs> selfie, bro. No, but you were in that picture, you didn't realize it. Um, I, I, think, I think we all just really like making music and. I don't know. I don't have that many friends. I don't. I don't smoke, so I make beats. I don't drink. It's a pretty, it's it's a pretty I, sober I, crowd up here. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know what other people's habits are, but I. I think that's a big part of it. I just, you know, and because that's my only job, and because I'm cool with not leaving the house for weeks on end. Because if I leave the house, I gotta shave. I gotta think about what I'm wearing. Oh and, God. I don't want to do all that, so let me just make music. And as long as like I don't look crazy from here, from like my shoulders up, I can just put the camera in front of myself and run a beat club session or handle my beat stars interviews or make beat videos that my face doesn't even have to be in. It's great. I think we need to get him out of Wisconsin. <laughs> get him out of the house. <laughs> but uh, all right, so back to the question of like, beats don't sell themselves. Um, well, they do if they're really, really good, but you also have to have a reliable technology partner to make sure that you can run your business efficiently, um, manage your customer bases. I'm sure you guys are constantly getting hit up, right, by so many different people that are trying to buy beats, trying to look for beats, trying to download free stuff. Um, how, how do you guys feel 
Kate, I'll start with you. How do you feel Be the BeatStars platform has helped you maintain your business, grow your business, and just kind of just manage everything on a day-to-day? -day? It's really the automation, and that, when it comes down to it, is so key when it comes to creating a business. I mean, you want to figure out as many different ways to automate your business so that you can spend your time. Because, you know, at the end of the day, us as creators, we have to create product. Like, that's, that should be our job. But at the same time, you're also an entrepreneur. So having a business is going to involve you doing things within the business as well. So you kind of wear two different hats. And I think naturally, us as creators, we're, um, we're always going to be good on the music part, right? That just comes naturally to us. But for me personally, I had to work a lot harder on the business side and trying to learn that side of the business. So BeatStars really made it simple by automating a lot of things that I would, before that platform existed, had to do on my own. Um, things like uh, the, the licenses and the contracts that come with each license that the customer purchases. Um, automating like the different options for each beat, uh, automating the options to add stems with your beat. You know, it just it just made every it just kind of streamlined the whole process of running that side of the business. So that was really key for me um, when it came to selling beats online. Okay, I was so excited when 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 um, BeatStars incorporated. There were a bunch of things that you incorporated because you incorporated pixels, but that's been there for a while. But then when the services and kits option was was integrated into the pro page, I just stopped using other platforms because the other platforms are taking their cut. PayPal's taking their cut. I just use BeatStars and you accept multiple forms of payment and I don't have to give a commission if I'm releasing the kit by myself. And so that is everything in one place, you know, that it's effectively becoming my entire online presence is like the one-stop shop. So it does go back to automation, but flexibility is, a, is another uh, major factor. Cash? Um, yeah, we follow uh, Kelo. He say everything is automated in, in, uh, on, in Beast, on BeatStars because it's super easy. For example, I used to use uh, SoundClick before BeatStars. And when you sell a bid, you have to send the bid directly via email. So imagine you were getting like 15 sales a day. So you have to send like 15 bids all the time. But with bid stars, like every time you get a sale, the bid gets sent like automatically after the payment. And it's also like a way like it's super easy to use bid stars. Like there is like many like um, possibilities. Like uh, you can post sound kit. With the pro page, you can have different uh, services such as mix uh, and mastering beats, mastering and mixing songs, and uh, you can use the content ID to monetize the. Like for example, if you post a beat, somebody steal the beat, and then uh, we'll say like they get like a hundred thousand views. You can use the content ID to get the money for the views. So yeah. So let's let's talk about that a little bit in regards to free beats and people downloading and stealing beats. Um, Cash, you've kind of adopted, you know, a strategy of like everyone take my shit, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna love what you're listening to, and you're gonna be a fan of me, and you're gonna be in my world, and you're gonna buy other products from me. You've adopted that, and you've proven that it's a successful model compared to so many. I mean, this guy's our top selling producer. So it's proven that it's it's working. Um, what made you decide to start allowing free downloads and um, how has that helped you grow on your social media and just your business and awareness in the industry in general? Man, that's funny. Uh, the first time I started dropping free bits, it was because of a big French rapper that used one of my uh, tag bits from YouTube. You, you were hearing my tag like every 20 seconds. And he used it, and the video got like 10 million views right now. So I was like, why not? Like, I'm just going to drop a beat with just a tag at the beginning, post it as a free beat, and just get the the, the money from uh, the monetization. And uh, when I first dropped my first free beat, it started blowing up. Like my YouTube channel, like, start like going up, like really. The How many subscribers right? do you have now? Uh, I got like uh, 400,000 right now. Yeah, almost. And I get around uh, 7 million views a month. Yeah. So yeah, 
I wasn't the first one doing free beats, but I was the first one that like succeeded doing it. And I think I also I'm a flex, but I also got quality beats, so that's why I probably stand out from the other producers. But you're not just all only giving away like free downloads. You're doing it. There's a he uses a, a, I think a, a marketing tool on BeatStars that we allow for social follows yeah, in exchange yeah. for downloads. Are you still still doing that? Yeah, I still use that. So he's like, bu he's building up his follower base to remarket to to retarget to while he's giving away a low quality sample download of his music, which is, uh, which is dope. Yeah. But for other there's other producers that are, are um, against this, and they also still, still see success. Knowing your demographic um, in any business in general is probably the most important part of how you can curate and create content. Cato, you have a signature sound. You're making music for, um, you're making music for yourself, but at the same time, you also know who you're making music for too. How how important do you feel um, is when you're when you're making tracks and you're you're building this Cato brand, this signature sound? How how important do you think it is to make sure that you're you're consciously always creating product um, for a certain demographic of people? I think it's super important. I mean, I think I got lucky too, is because. I kind of came up in the game working with artists that I just like, and we ended up developing our sounds together. And so that became my audience, you know, people who listen to that kind of music, people who like that kind of music. So I just lucked out being able to create the music that I like and being able to sell it to people who listen to my music too. Um, and I just want to say something. Uh, I, I was at the, the BeatStars Atlanta meetup, and I was talking to everyone in the in the audience, all the other producers, and somehow I mentioned Cash Money. I think it was because we met at uh, was it 83C, 83C, right? We met at 83C, and I I brought up his name, and of course everyone was familiar with him. And someone said something about how do you feel about him putting out free beats, and I was like. It's fucking amazing. Like, it's working for him. And I think if it's working for you, keep doing it. You know, you'd be stupid not to do it. So to me, it doesn't really matter what, what other producers are doing. You have to figure out what works for you. And there's a hundred different ways for you to get on in this game. You just have to figure out which one works for you and be the best at that, you know? So don't try to do everything that other producers are already doing. Figure out you know, what your lane is, who your audience is, what kind of strategies work for you. If you're you know, good on social media, if you have a big following there, take advantage of that. If you are a networking person, maybe you have a dope personality and people just gravitate towards you, like network with people. You can just get on by knowing the right people. You know. So um, my bad, bro, I kind of forgot the question. but. <laughs> Yeah, but oh yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when I sit down to make a beat, um, I'm just making shit that I like. But I also always keep my audience in mind, and I I always kind of think about what are my top selling beats on the site. How can I make stuff that kind of fits in that vein, not identical to it, because I still want to keep all my shit kind of different and and unique, but. How can I still cater to my audience's ear and make shit that they like? So, um, and ever since I started doing that, my sales have gone up. So I know it's working. Payne, you want to answer that too? Like how you cater your music? Uh, it's just kind of, I mean, music is all subjective. So there's something for everybody. Sometimes I'll put out a beat that doesn't sell for a month. And then that month it sells a couple times. I just, I can't predict it. but. There are beats I know are gonna sell when I upload them, and you know that's cool. But it's all just kind of trial and error for me. I'm not at the point of my beat selling journey where I know exactly what my audience wants. That's always just been a problem for me anyway, making beats because I just I like everything, so I just want to make everything. Um, so I'll probably keep doing that. But as time goes on, seeing my audience's behaviors and how they respond to certain sounds, I think, will help shape uh, my process. I'll, I'll be a little more deliberate. Cool. Thank you. Um, 
I'll, I'll tell you a question I get asked all the time by music producers. Um, they, they hit me up, hey, I uploaded 10 beats. I haven't sold anything yet. And the dude uploaded the beats six months ago, right? And never continuously released music after that, building up their catalog and um, continuing to kind of feed a potential audience of people that may purchase or like their music. You guys are like clockwork. Um, and sometimes I'll, you know, and I, and I talk to these guys and sometimes I'm like, dude, how much, how much are you spending on advertising? You're probably spending a few hundred thousand dollars a year on advertising to, to gain these social media followers or these listens and these plays. And then a lot of the times these guys tell me they didn't spend shit. And so then I go back and, and I pick their brains and I say, then what is the biggest factor in having a sustainable, consistent income stream with selling beats? And I'll let them tell you, but it's all about having a consistent release schedule and um, uploading very consistently. Cash, tell me how often do you upload and why? I upload every day, every day. I make beats every day, upload every day. And I only do it because I feel kind of guilty to not drop beats. I don't know if you feel the same way. I feel guilty to not drop music. So that's why I always do it. And I always get good feedbacks. Like I know noticed, noticed, noticed that my uh, subscriber count was like going up every time I was uploading a beat. So I say, why not dropping a beat every day? I'm, I'm making beats every day. So you want to kill me to drop, drop beats every day. So that's what I do. And I can give you this advice is to be consistent. Like if you can drop a beat like every day, try to drop a beat like every two day, like every three days, but it's going to pay off. I got an example with one of my friends. He got in the internet game like six months ago. And this month, he made 5,000 bucks selling beats. And the only uh, advice I gave him is like to keep making music, keep dropping music, like use SoundCloud, use YouTube, and you see it's going to pay off, and it starts to pay off this month. So, yeah. Payne, how does your release schedule look like? Uh, probably three to, f probably like the most I'll upload is five a week, but it's, it's consistent. Um, I didn't start really making money until I put myself on a schedule because I had beat stars for a life, probably a year, year and a half, and you were probably regretting even recruiting me. And then finally, I just, I still kind of regret it a little bit. Thank you. I just I went in and just started putting stuff out, and next thing you know, sales are coming in, and I'm looking at it like a real viable stream of income because it is, and it just it literally came from the consistency. I mean, you I, obviously you you advertise, you um, network, you do all the other stuff that comes with it, but if the I'll, I'll tell you, I'll put it this way: a lot of people complain about the platform. Um, they, they complain about, and this is, it's not just BeatStars, it's just period. The internet game is too saturated, I can't make any money. Cash Money AP is winning too hard, I can't make any money. BeatStars, uh, I just put three beats on BeatStars and why aren't, why isn't BeatStars getting my beats to rappers? Not making any money. All the people complaining are not on a consistent schedule. They might drop 10 beats in one day, don't do that because YouTube will actually punish your search results if you do that. All these, all these social media platforms, they don't take kindly to serial posting and your engagement will go down. Um, and that's just, the, the thing is a lot of people don't realize that. So, so long story short, the people who are vocal complainers about their lack of success are not consistently releasing music. Even if their beats are good, they're not consistently releasing them, and they're not taking the time to learn how the platform to which they're uploading music actually operates and, and can benefit them. And that's, it's, it's really basic stuff, but it's the stuff that people overlook all the time, all the time. Uh, I don't upload every day, but God damn it, I'm, I'm about to start doing that. Um, yeah, I probably upload about once or twice a week, and I found good consistency in doing that. 
uh, I think for me, what I'm focused on right now heavily is scaling, because I know I'm only reaching a very, very small percentage of artists or, or people who are looking for beats. So I'm trying to figure out different ways to reach more people. So I invest a lot of my money uh, every month into advertising. I use Facebook ads, I use Google ads. I use a lot of different social media tools to help target the right audience on platforms like Instagram, Twitter, where I know artists are, you know? So right now for me, I mean, I'm sure I, I will become more consistent as far as uploading more, um, but once or twice a week and just investing a lot of money into advertising. Cool. So let's keep let's keep on the con on the topic of, of content um, and scaling and sometimes being busy and working multiple wearing multiple hats working within different industries and different revenue streams. You're not just limited to just you know uploading making beats all day. So we in 2009 we introduced a feature um, called Collabs and uh, we're the first digital music company to allow multiple collaborators um, assigned to a track that's for sale on the internet and automatically distribute revenue um, uh, when, when a track is sold to all parties involved. And I feel like when we did that in 2009, I think, not to toot my own horn, but that changed the way producers interacted because for so long it was just you guys in a room making beats by yourselves. And music is not meant to be always just made by yourselves, right? So all, all these guys have been utilizing this collaborative tool. So, um, and they all use them, and they all use it in different ways. Sometimes it's an actual real collaboration where it's Cato and another producer working together, adding different elements to a beat. Same thing with, with Pain. But um, with Cash, which is really interesting because of how big his following is, he's been able to kind of like, okay, I'm going to work this week and next week and do a lot of industry stuff and make beats just for the industry, but I need a consistent flow of dope music from dope young producers that don't necessarily get the shine, and he uploads their tracks to his site. He may add something to it. Um, he may not but he gives them the opportunity to get on his profile and split revenue with them. How do you feel that collaboration tool, that, that feature cache has like helped you have you know, just a consistent flow of content? And then also, how has that helped relationships with a lot of these new and young producers that you're discovering on your social media? It's dope, man. There is so 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 much talent like out here, like upcoming producers that need the recognition. Like I can see, man, like every day, like on my Twitter, like producers posting the links, like me checking and like hearing, oh yeah, it's dope. Like as yesterday at the Beach Star session, they all were dope. Like I'm like, oh yeah, they need to, to get some shine. So that's why I make a beat with everybody, every producer, so I can like post on my YouTube, post on my website, so we can like split profit. I mean first before doing that, I'm going to try to get the beats to artists. So, you know, so they can like start so they can get ready first, like so they can like uh, build the brand, start building the brand industry-wise, then, because the only, the thing I'm saying is that, um, you know, when you, a rapper listening to a song, you say, oh, the song is dope, but who made this beat? I'm like, he's like, oh yeah, I need to check him out online, and then if he's going to check him out online, he doesn't find anything, how is he going to find the producer? So that's why I'm trying to help, like, upcoming producers, like, to at least, like, try to blow up a little bit and make at least a good money from the, the collab, and then, yeah, that's it. Dope. And, and Payne had like a different, different um, I think, experience with the collabs and utilizing that to benefit. He's already had this like repertoire of amazing music in the industry and he's done work with so many great artists. So he was able to kind of come in and work with a lot of the top guys on the internet, top guys on YouTube, and then leverage those relationships. Those guys all want to work with him. His music's dope. Doesn't matter if you're big on the internet or not. Doesn't matter. They wanted to work with Payne. He, you know, he has great music. So he collaborated with all these guys. And now he's being introduced to all their fans and all their customers. And you're listed as a collaborator with all these top sellers. How do you feel like that has impacted your business on a day-to-day? -day? Well, the fact that I get an alert every time the beat sells, even if it's the free beat from a buy one, get one free situation, I'll still get an alert. 
So I'm getting alerts all damn day from, you know, even is Beat Demon, is Chris in here? Yeah, like my man over there from Beat Demons, we collaborated on a track. I collaborated with the crates early on. I think they were the first people that I collaborated with. And now I look back and I'm, I just really am appreciative of, of these producers for even, you know, being willing to collaborate with me because I was just starting off on the platform. I had maybe 50,000 plays or something. It wasn't anything crazy. And um, they were willing to collaborate with, with me. And, you know, when I think back, it's like, yeah, duh, it's probably because of my catalog. But um, at the same time, that's not necessarily helping them in any way. It's just more of a, of a love for the music kind of situation. And the fact that, that I was seeing all the sales they were making, it kind of, it's, it's almost like I'm spying on them in a weird way. I'm like, damn, Dream Life is selling a lot of beats because I get like 10 alerts just from a single collab every day. So it made me want to talk more with, with these guys. And I had a chance to at A3C. That's when like all of us met and I got to see the process and it was just everyone's collaborating with everybody. Everyone's sharing information. I'm learning a lot about how deep th th this game really gets. And that that was the moment where everything changed for me psychologically, where I was just like, this is, this is it. This is really the new industry. This is the, the well, I should say the new ist industry, because it's been kind of revolutionized and re-revolutionized over and over again over the, over the past couple of decades with, you know, how fast technology is, is evolving on the internet. But right now, this is, this has taken such a, a stronghold and it's only evolving to benefit producers more and more that I needed to start taking it very seriously. And now I really do and I really respect that. I respect anybody using these platforms to, to live their dreams and stay independent and control their own destinies because that's just an amazing thing that up until very recently, we've, we as producers have not had. And so it's an amazing opportunity. And, and Cato, I feel like you've been using the collaboration tools in a different way, where you've entered not as Cato the producer, but you've actually like built a production brand called Nasty Tracks that uh, so many people are familiar with. And as part of Nasty Tracks, you incorporate so many different producers in this pr like production library. Why did you choose to do that? Uh, kind of the same reason. Cash Money mentioned is because I just had a lot of producer homies that made dope shit but didn't have any presence online and weren't necessarily getting paid off of it. So I just saw an opportunity for all of us to eat off of my platform that I'd built through just years of grinding on social media. And so that was my original idea for Nasty Tracks, which was to uh, upload my homies beats that I thought were dope and just split the revenue 50-50, you know? And that made the most sense to me. And I, I still do collaborations with outside producers, too. I mean, anyone that hits me up and wants to work that I think deserves the recognition, I mean, I'm all about collaborating and, and making money, you know? Um, and I, had, I, I also collaborate in another way, just leveraging my platform uh, for, for contests and that kind of stuff. I don't know if you were going to get into that. but. Um, I have an annual online rap contest called No Suck MCs, and I started it in 2013, 2014, and this was fresh off of Funk Volume. And the first year I did it, it was cool. You know, I got, I got a good number of entries, maybe like 200 online entries. Um, and, you know, I picked the winners, and I think I made a couple thousand dollars off of the contest. And the second year I did it, it was even bigger, and this time, at the last minute, I had one entry from an artist out of the New England area. Um, he wasn't known, but, I mean, you guys know him today as Joyner Lucas, and he entered my contest, and he fucking murdered it, killed it, and so I chose him as the winner. And ever since then, every single year, the contest has been getting bigger and bigger. And this is literally just something that I'm doing on my own. I've never had any sponsors or partnerships. I'll probably partner with Abe on the next one, but better. yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be bigger. Um, 
And I made even more money that year. I think I made like 10, 10 Gs just off of that contest. And then the next year I did it, I had another young 16-year-old white kid rapper out of, again, the New England area. I don't know what it is in that area, but um, he goes by Token. And some of you guys might be familiar, but the kid is blowing up now. If you go to his, just his social media pages, like within the next few years, Token is going to be signed to someone or doing something major, you know? Um, and last year I ran the contest, I, I made like 20 racks off of the contest. So it's been a really, really good opportunity for me to kind of establish credibility with new upcoming artists on the internet and make money at the same time. So that, that was kind of collaboration in a different sense. That's dope. I'm gonna ask one last question and then we're gonna open it up for a couple, for a couple uh, Q and A's if you guys wanna ask a couple. You have like 10 minutes, but keep this answer short, guys. You don't have to get into do too much depth so we can get some questions from the audience. But, you know, BeatStars is on pace to pay, um, on pace to process over $20 million for producers this year. Um, it's amazing to just kind of see that happening right now and where we are in this industry. Um, where do you see the future of, of what we're doing all together here? Cash, I'll, I'll talk to you. Man, we're going to the stock market. <laughs> All right, I'm yeah. down. I, I think this is going to be the sole, if not, well, maybe not the sole, but the dominant source for beats for everybody. Record, major record labels, independent record labels, individuals, hobbyists, um, music, uh, what are they called, music supervisors, the people who license and, and write up the cue sheets for television shows and film. That's what I think. I agree with both. Um, I, think, I think it's just gonna continue to get bigger. I mean, the internet's not going anywhere. I think the technology is only gonna get better. So with that, it's just gonna be more beats, bigger platform, more money. Mo money, mo money. All right, y'all, I appreciate y'all. Let's take a couple questions. Maybe you guys can line up over here if there's any, anybody that wants to ask. And then um, just tell it who you want to ask it to, and then we'll go from there. I'm going I'm to come down there. So if we give our beats away for free, how are you protected? as far as copyrights and everything like that? Do you copyright your music beforehand and then sell them, I mean, or give them out, or what? When you say giving out for free, like giving out online or giving out to rappers? Online. Oh, you use the content IG with BeatStars. So BeatStars, is that more? I mean, those free downloads don't have any licensing terms. Yeah. yeah. So they're not being licensed, so just to answer that question, so there's nothing to protect. It's just a, a free sample. Do you offer services that protect your beats, or is that something that we would have to do outside on our own? I think to protect your beats on a more legitimate legal way, you would want to consult a lawyer, for sure, first. We have a great one right over there, Sebastian Czar. You should talk to him. And, you know, and then I think there's a copyright office within within the government to make sure that your music is, if it's original, you wanna, yeah, you can copyright it there and be protected if anything gets used of it. Cool, thank you. Honestly, bro, I wouldn't even give a fuck about copywriting my shit. Like, I mean, I know it's important, you know, but at, when you're at the point where no one's, there's no demand for your music, and maybe you're still building that up, which is which is cool, but. I, I meet so many new producers who are asking me about like copyrights and all this legal shit before anyone even gives a fuck about their music, you know? So it's like, uh, and I went through the same thing myself. I had to realize that I need to build that demand and I need to of course know the right people, know like entertainment lawyers who can help me along the way. But you know, at this stage in the game, man, I would just be focused on, on getting your shit out there as much as possible. I'm sorry, let me just add, because we've been talking about this a lot on Beat Club, it'll be brief. This is my three-step program for when your beats get stolen. Number one, contact the artist, say, bro, you can't do this, give me some money. If they don't, you go to step two, which is file a DMCA claim, um, and then step, and then you just get it taken down, you know, and 
Now they can't make money off of it, and if they really want it, they have to come back to you to get it. Step three, um, use the content ID system. If it's already out there and it's getting views, then monetize their videos, get the money. Um, if it's getting millions of views, find find an admin situation and sweep the rug up from under them. Take uh, take your full 100% composure share. Get paid off that. You can make tens of thousands of dollars off that. But if you're not at that point yet, don't stress out about it. Just just do some do, do some reading, do some research, and and you'll figure it out, and you'll be prepared for when that does happen because it probably will. It happens to all of us. I was gonna, my name Miracle. I'm a producer myself. I got a question for uh, Cash Money. Like, I've been following you, bro, for like the longest time. And uh, I just seen your fan base just really like took off like super fast. Like, what was the one thing that really just like worked that you just seen like work? Like, what you mean like work? Like, like as far as building your fans, what, how did you really get your, cause like, you can post beats all day and you will have views, but you won't have comments. Like, but you get comments, you get likes, and you know what? What were you doing to get your fans more engaged with what you with what you were doing? Oh, it's more like the quality of your beats, man. And make sure to not shit. Like, you know, there is a lot of people like buying fake views, like fake likes to like make it look good, but then it doesn't work. Like, all my things are like organic, like. I swear, like it's organic. Everything is organic. Views, likes, subscribers, everything is organic. That's why I would say I'm winning. And at, at the beginning when I started, man, I, I was replying to every comment, man. Yeah. Every comment I was replying. Then if people wanted me to do like this, like do a logic type I was doing a logic type Then I was like picking another comment. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do a young tag type And I think what makes me like blow up is that I focus myself in one like one camera. This it was Young Tug. Like every time, if you if you like type on Google on YouTube, Young Tug type it. The first person gonna be my beats, man. Like like 20 beats, only me. So putting the names in the description. Yeah, that I, really I, helped. I, I I can't tell you. I can't say that it's going to work, but it worked for me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. No problem, bro. What up, Rob? My name is Docs. Uh, Recently, I noticed that people like Timbaland have been speaking out against uh, publishing royalties and stuff, uh, kind of not being um, given to the producer even after big hits and stuff. A lot of producers are coming out talking about they haven't been paid. Uh, do you guys focus a lot on royalties or just kind of selling the beats themselves on the front end versus getting you know paid on the back end? Anybody. I was going to say, Payne, I know you got some opinions about this. I mean, there's no law that says you have to get your publishing, but it's a standard practice. So it's basically a law in the music world. If you do not sign away your, your composer's share and it's an original beat, you own half of the record, period. Um, there's been a lot of misinformation out there specifically targeting internet producers saying, you know, if you can't, there was that stupid ass meme that, that came out that every everybody, I can't even say every idiot because there's a lot of smart people sharing this and it disappointed me um, that with Jermaine Dupri about the Coco beat where, he, where someone just put words in JD's mouth saying if you sell a beat on the internet, you're not entitled to your royalties. At the end of the day, a lot of producers, and there's no shame in this, we're just, we're, we're not, adept when it comes to, to business. And a lot of us don't even understand what publishing is. We don't understand what performance rights are. We don't understand what performance royalties are or how they're generated. We think ASCAP protects us legally and we think copyright is a content ID system. So at the second we start arming ourselves with information and understanding exactly what every element of our, of our business model entails, how it works and how we utilize it to our advantage, then we become a lot stronger. But to answer your question, um, it, it's, it's not a matter of us just sitting there focusing on a front end or a back end. It's a matter of us understanding that we're entitled to both, period. There's no situation other than if you sample or you collaborate with somebody else where you should be, uh, where you should end up with a surprise situation and you're not getting your full 50% of, of your 
um, composer share. There, there's, there's just no situation like that. So you might hear of some exceptional cases in which somebody signs a, a bad contract, but they signed the bad contract and it was there written in somewhat plain English. They didn't have a lawyer. They didn't have somebody who knew what they were doing review it. If you're presented with something you don't understand, I, I don't care if you don't have any money. I don't care if the lawyer is going to cost one half or one third of the events that the contract um, is paying you. Get the lawyer because that people emphasize the front end like that's it, but it's not it. If that song gets licensed, you get money. If that song gets played on satellite radio, you get money. If that song gets synced in it internet commercial or TV commercial, you, you, you get money. Um, so just everybody in here, just tell yourself that you deserve half of the song if you compose the whole beat. You just do. And, you know, get a lawyer when you need one. Don't sign stuff you don't understand. If you're selling beats online with the BeatStars platform, the contracts they, that they present I think it's actually something where, like, the BeatStars contract gives you more than, than um, I don't know. It, it's it's I know for a fact the BeatStars contract covers your your um, composer's share at least, and possibly more than that. Uh, so, just you know, when when the time comes, you you might have to put yourself out there and register some of these songs if they start you know, getting some views, but don't let people tell you that that, that you, you don't deserve that and, like, there's some special top secret step you have to take or you have to really fight for that stuff. No, nah, it's yours. Don't don't accept anything less than what, what you're owed because, ra like, if a rapper buys a beat from you and they're like, oh, well, we, I, I want your publishing share, why? You didn't do anything. You didn't make the beat. It's not the money that, that you're owed from those performance royalties. That doesn't come out of the rapper's pocket. The radio stations pay that. The television stations pay that. The, the bars and venues pay that. That's your money. So, so would you say that you're more inclined to um, work with an artist versus just selling them the beat, knowing that maybe they have a bigger following and you're going to have uh, more publishing rights, uh, get, I mean, more publishing on that end. Get all of it, bro. Yeah. Get the front end and the back end money. You know, like, I think the, the awesome part about all the producers up here is that we've been successful in doing both. Like, we have an, a platform like BeatStars that allows us to collect the money up front for the licenses, but we also all get publishing money, too, from the records that we produced. And so, um, you, you developing relationships with artists, being in the studio, and working with those artists consistently, that eventually is going to get you some sort of publishing money. You know, if you're working with the right people and, and you're really, really out there grinding and meeting the right people, um, you know, so you're going to get your publishing money, but make sure you know how to collect that money too, you know, because that's super, super important. A lot of producers don't know w what publishing even is, and you're missing out on half of your revenue stream just by not knowing what publishing is. So um, I know what you're asking. You should be getting paid on both ends. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. What's up, y'all? I appreciate y'all for being here. Um, basically, my question is basically for all y'all. I know y'all was talking about um, basically dropping stuff consistently and stuff. And I was just wondering, how do you actually drive traffic to your site? You know, B-Stars, I have a B-Stars profile. I'm just wondering how you actually drive traffic to your site. You're talking about dropping stuff consistently, but what are the other ways? I know somebody mentioned something about a pixel code. Like, what is that? I never heard of that. Let me answer that real quick. So if, if you have a BeatStars profile, you already have a built-in user base of millions and millions of visitors every single month. And so we have our own internal ad network 
that you can opt into and have your music kind of showcased more within on the main feed um, in different in different loca in search and different different locations of, of the website inside genres and you'll have sponsored locations. If I'm starting out, that's probably the first place I'm going to go to because it's very inexpensive. Like we have spots that are like a dollar or two and you're going to gain plays and you're tapping into the built-in base of artists that are already there. And then once you've done that and you've accumulated that, inside of BeatStars, in my media, you have a top fan section. So we tell you who's streaming your music, who's downloading your music, who's interacting with your music, and those are all warm leads, right? These are all, all warm leads that once you start building these, these streams, you can see who these, who these profiles are, who these artists are. And you can reach out to them and offer them a promotional discount or just reach out to them to collab or do something like that. That's what I would start with because, and then of course, putting your stuff on all those yeah. um, YouTube and SoundCloud and, and utilizing the right, I think Cash brought a very important, like you, I don't know if you guys, you guys missed that jam where he said, I'm focusing on one uh, genre or one tag, which was Young Thug, right? Mm -hmm. And he kind of carved his name out with that artist when people are searching Young Thug. Same thing with, uh, I see the same thing happen with like Dream Life Beats or with the Beat Demons. They're, they're focusing on um, you know, a niche, a niche of uh, a, a niche of uh, of discovery that not everyone else is, uh, you know, working working or, or searching for. So, say if you make, uh, I don't know, man, it could be like it could be an artist that's not as crazy popular, but you know, you really resonate with that artist's sound, and you that's 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 the kind of music you make. And so, if someone discovers that, they're gonna find the music that you make very good to their taste because it's like, okay, this is kind of like what I'm looking for. So dominate dominate one genre, one niche for as for in, in the beginning as long as you can, right? And then once you've built that base, then you can start experimenting with different different types of uh, beats and different types of sounds. That's just my personal opinion. Is I feel like every producer needs to find the closest relatable sound via an artist like a Young Thug or a J. Cole and focus on that shit as long as you can until you've built out a base where now, okay, I have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. They might like a Kendrick beat. Okay. They might like, you know what I mean? That's, that's, my, that's my personal you know, advice on that to get started right away. Right. If these guys want to answer, it's up to them. Oh, Be BeatStars has a lot of really good resources. I mean, if you just Google BeatStars pixel code, there's an explanation. So uh, I'm gonna do. I'm yeah, the blog is like, used. They got video explanations. They explain it to you because it's it's deep. I can't really explain it. I don't think any of us can just explain it right now. But yeah. take, take take like a, an hour or two a week and just look at these resources. Google search, you know, YouTube tutorials. But BeatStars has a lot of original explanations of the functions of their platform that will help you. Got you. Hi, my name is Melody, excuse me, and I, um, I just had a question, this is really basic, but how did you, I, I've been making beats for like almost two years, and I'm a vocalist, but I'm trying to see like, how do you take your beats to the next level? Because I just want to do it really well, you know? I don't want to put out crap. So. Just, it's like everything else in the world, just practice, practice, put in the time, you know? Um, it's literally no different from any other sport or anything that you want to get good at. You just have to put in the time. I mean, easily, everyone up here has put in countless, countless, countless hours just sitting in front of a keyboard making beats. Um, yeah, and, and as far as, you know, once you've gotten your beats to that level, you know, you, you, you have to just want it, yeah. you know? I always tell producers, like, the only reason that I'm in this position and some kid in their basement who is only focused on making beats and not really anything else is just because I wanted it more. Yeah. That's the only difference. I'm not necessarily more talented than any of y'all. It's just I wanted it and I was consistent at it for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And that has allowed me to create a career out of what I love to do, period. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. All right. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for sitting with us for an hour and uh, listening in. Uh, hope you guys took away some, some information that you could take back home to build with. And um, if you 
want to use a BeatStars account and you want to try it out for like one month, use the, use the promo code SXSW and uh, you'll get a free month to try it out and, um, you know, let's build. Let's make some money. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.